Hey, hi, hello guys, Nightmare in the Line here, back with another video. Welcome to my channel if this is the first time seeing my videos, and welcome back if you've seen even more and somehow aren't tired of me yet. First, I want to interrupt this video real quick because I have a very important announcement. As of me recording and you seeing this, I've set an official date for the release of my comic! Ah! Uh... My comic, Love by the Sea. As you might know that my first video on this series of the Greek the Myths, the Legends, my comic is based off of the myth that was talked about in that video. I absolutely love this story, which is the myth of the love story between Amphrite and Poseidon, and I'm just so excited, and I just got to take a very special spin on it, just myself, all on my own, and it's great. I announced this on Saturday in my Discord, and I give updates of my comic there, and I have set the official release date to August 30th of this year! Oh, I'm so excited! I'm so excited to release the comic, and I hope you guys are too! I have been dying to like just tell you guys about it, but I haven't been able to until recently. Um, if you want to go on me my Discord and see all the stuff about my comic, talk to me up close, and join the community, just go to the link tree link down in the description. Um, there's also uh, the ability to, if you want to see behind the scenes stuff about my comic and the YouTube videos, you can check out my Patreon. But if you don't feel like paying monthly, but still want to support me, my comic, and the channel, check out my Kofi and buy me an energy drink. Anyways, that's all for my little rant. Now, on to the video. Welcome or welcome back as we jump into the newest video in my series, The Greek the Myth, The Legends. If this is your first time with the series, then let me explain what it's all about. In the series, I go over and deep dive into whatever I can find on different Greek myths and legends that either I've discovered or you have suggested. I basically just take all the info that will make your brain hurt and torture myself into putting it into an easier and shorter format to digest. I'm just kidding. I love what I'm doing. If you have any suggestions of myths you might know or are curious about, please leave them in the comments down below. With that, let's get into it. The myth we are going over today is the love story between Thetis, the sea nymph, and the Greek hero Peleus, and how their wedding started the Trojan War. And we also get into the story of the famous Greek hero Achilles. Thetis is a sea nymph who is the daughter of Nereus and Doris and <laughs> the sister to Amphitrite, the queen of the sea, which was in the first video of my series, and Eurydice, the god turned sea snail, who was featured in my last video. She is the wife of the Greek hero and prince, from what I found, Peleus, and the mother to the famous Greek hero Achilles. She's well liked among the gods and humans as well, and has also been written in to be a shapeshifter. She's also known to have helped out a few gods as well, so she has been found in a few myths. The god she has helped has been Dionysus when he got expelled from Thrace, and she hid him away by covering him in seaweed. Doesn't sound very pleasant. She also helped raise Hera and Zeus's child Hephaestus after he was cast down from Olympus as a child, either by Hera or Zeus, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, she then helped by raising up Hephaestus with another goddess, I cannot remember who. Also, it has been believed that she also saved Zeus himself and the throne to Olympus. It was written in the Iliad by Homer that some of the Olympians rose up against Zeus and tried to overthrow him, but he was saved by Thetis. It is also believed that she's actually more powerful than credited in the Iliad as well because she went to Zeus to stop something and he listened. And I think we all know Zeus and know that it doesn't take just anyone to make him obey. 
She is not recognized much, but she actually plays a bigger role in Greek mythology than I first actually thought. Now, the interesting thing about Thetis is that she has a special prophecy that is also mentioned in my comic, and yes, it is Love by the Sea. The name and date of release has already been put out there today. <laughs> I just released the- I just made known the release date. It will be coming out later this month on August 30th. Anyways, Thetis has this prophecy tied to her that her child will grow to be more powerful than their father. The interesting thing about this is that Metis, Zeus's first wife, shares the same prophecy, and once Zeus was aware and discovered that Metis was pregnant, he ate her. This later resulted into the birth of Athena quite weirdly, but we're not going to get into that right now. Luckily, Thetis did not share the same fate as Metis, but she was in line to become the next queen of the gods, believed or not. She had been pursued by Zeus before he married Hera, and she would have been queen too if it were not for Zeus finding out about her prophecy. Once discovered, Zeus dropped her, married Her Hera, and banned any of the other gods from marrying Thetis, as he feared her prophecy was too powerful or dangerous. But truly, I think he was just scared to be overthrown by her child. I have found two different ways that this story goes. She either found and fell in love with Peleus after he got a primordial god Proteus, which I think is a combination of the old man of the sea Nereus, but with the status of the primordial god of the seas Pontus, with some different myths attached to his name, but I cannot be 100% sure on that, to help win Thetis' heart and succeeded. Or the other side of the story, after Zeus rejected her rise as a wife and queen, he then went and set up an arranged marriage for Peleus and Thetis. Either way, they fell in love. Peleus is known as a Greek hero, but I am assuming he is a prince as well, because he is the son of Achaeus, the king of the island Agena and the Orion nymph Endes. Endes? Endes? He is the husband of Thetis, uh, the sea nymph, and the father of Achilles, the great Greek hero. So, in my research, I have found the origin of Peleus before he married or met Thetis, and I'm also going to be quoting it from a source that I found because I can't really condense it since all of it is just so interesting. So, apparently Peleus, along with his brother Telamon, they accidentally killed their half-brother Phocus while hunting and were therefore forced to flee the island of Agena in order to avoid punishment. When they reached the region of Pythia, Peleus fell in love with Antigone, the daughter of the region's king Eurytion, with whom he had a daughter, Polydora. Peleus, Telamon, and Eurytion were all participants in the Agronic Expedition in Jason's quest to retrieve the Golden Fleece. Sometime later, yet in another ha hunting accident for some reason, Peleus killed Eurytion and had to flee. If I had a nickel for each time he accidentally killed people on a hunting trip, I would have two nickels, which is weird that it happened twice. Peleus reached Locus, where the king's wife, Acidemia, fell in love with him. Peleus denied her advances, and for revenge, Acidemia sent a message to Antigone saying that Peleus would marry her daughter. Antigone was so bitter that she hung herself. Acidemia then falsely accused Peleus of trying to R-word her. The king, Acustus, took Peleus into the forest where he abandoned him just before an attack by centaurs. Peleus was saved by Chiron, the wise centaur, or Hermes, the messenger god. Peleus escaped, ransacked the locusts, and killed both Ascademia and Acustus, the king. So, in short, Peleus was a murderer at this point, and a serial killer. Honestly, not the best look, but okay.
Here's another quote from the same site that sums up the wedding and explains pretty well what happened. Their marriage was a grand event that was attended by most Olympian gods. However, the goddess of strife, Eris, was not invited. Angry that she was scorned, Eris dropped the apple of discord among the guests, a golden apple that had the in inscription reading, To the Ferris. Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite started arguing over who should be the one to receive the apple and told Zeus to decide. Zeus, reluctant to answer, said that the best person to decide was Paris, Prince of Troy, who was also attending the wedding. After being bribed by the goddesses, Paris eventually picked Aphrodite, who had promised him she would give him the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen of Sparta. This wedding, among other things, was a straw that broke the camel's back and started the Trojan War. At least our two lovers were able to get married, but the gods are obviously very extra. They obviously didn't want Iris at the wedding because she isn't exactly good for marriages, but still, it's honestly a lot of the gods' fault right now. Thetis and Peleus had seven children, but only one of the seven survived, and that was Achilles. Thetis, rightfully paranoid that she would lose her now only child or her husband because losing so many kids takes a toll. Thetis took baby Achilles and her husband and, di and dipped them in the river Styx to make them immortal. Peleus succeeded, but little Achilles only had one spot missing of immortality, which was the back of his heel where he his worried mother was holding him to dip in him in. He grew up fine and did surpass his father to become the great hero Achilles, who was almost unbeatable until one day, while fighting in the Trojan War that was started by his parents' wedding, he was shot by a poison arrow released by Paris of Troy that was guided by Apollo, the god of war. The arrow hit him just right and killed Achilles. Thetis in mourning then collected her son's body and cremated him and stored him in an urn. She then started festivals in her son's honor and name so he wasn't forgotten. Even though the, their wedding started the war and they had to lose all their children, at least they can be together forever. Though it started a war, this myth gave a somewhat happy ending that cannot be found in a good amount of, of myths in Greek mythology, sadly. And their wedding wasn't the direct cause, but the actions of the gods at the wedding. Well, that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the third episode of the Greek Smiths The Legends. If you know any Greek myths you want me to cover, feel free to comment it down below. And if you want to see more of my art and stuff from my comic, please check out my Linktree link in the description down below. And also, if you want to support me and see stuff about my comic, check out my Ko-fi and Patreon to see behind the scenes stuff of the comic and YouTube videos. While you're on Ko-fi, please buy me an energy drink while you're there. I would very much appreciate it. And if you want to talk to me more outside of the comment section, feel free to check out my Discord there we can have discussions and I can get the motivation from you guys to work on the comic. Anyways, that's all for now. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss another Greek Smiths Legends episode. And my live streams, I do them every Sunday. Make sure to stay hydrated, happy, and safe and have a wonderful day. Bye!